I'm Luke Williams. I was the game designer on Surgeon Simulator, and this is Eurogamer. I'm going to saw through your bones! Hi, everybody! Ian from Eurogamer here. Now, regular subscribers to the channel will know that the Rock Paper Shotgun hosted PC Gaming Expo Rest has now been and gone. Hopefully, you've watched some of the live streams on this channel. I popped along on the Saturday and grabbed some exclusive interviews with a few of the developers from the Expo's biggest games, and they'll be up on the channel very soon, starting with this one about Surgeon Simulator 2013, the game jam game done good. I spoke to Luke Williams, the game's designer, and asked him to give us the diagnosis on this hilarious sim of medical mishaps. What's up, Doc? It's a rough simulator based on surgery. <laughs> And uh, you play as Nigel Burke and his left hand and uh, save lives. The, the initial idea was just to control a hand. We liked the idea that you had just a hand to attempt to control with a keyboard and mouse. To be honest, the theme of the game jam when we originally made it was heartbeat. So we went literal and just went, oh yeah, heart transplant. Um, and then it kind of just went from there. We just liked the idea of a fumbling hand, just knocking stuff off the desk. And uh, yeah, so we just went ahead with that. The game's been rather successful, starting as a game jam game before graduating to full Steam Greenlight release, and recently there's been a rather cool free update which lets the player take control of the medic from Team Fortress 2, complete with all of his signature gadgets. Look, you can see me playing it in this gameplay footage right here, right now. How did this update come about? We've been kind of just, we were chatting with Valve and obviously we, we had communication when we were going through Greenlight and towards release. And I think our boss, Enrique, was just uh, chatting to them at GDC and said, hey, we should put Team Fortress in Surgeon Simulator. And uh, they agreed and went, yeah, sure. So they sent us their stuff over. And uh, since we released the game, like in April, we've just been kind of doing uh, that kind of update, really. So basically, if you've ever seen Meet the Medic video, it's more or less a recreation of that. So we had our artists kind of just go through frame by frame and just take all the objects that Valve had given us and just place it in the right place for Meet the Medic. And that's more or less it. So you've got to get out the baboon heart, slap in the uh, Uber device, stick it under the uh, healing gun, and then slap it in the uh, heavy. Yes, yeah, so we got like the uh, the Scouts baseball bat and the. I'm gonna get this wrong, the sniper's machete? Does he have the machete? I hope so. Otherwise I'm gonna get a lot of angry Team Fortress fans on my case. Um, yeah, then we've got the uh, the spies, like switchblade, butterfly knife, and all that for the scalpels. So we kind of just like took all the tools from, uh, from Team Fortress 2 and just converted them. Surgeon Sim drew huge crowds at Rezd, partially because it's so damn funny to see people struggling to control it and inadvertently slaughtering their patients, but also because you guys had brought along an Oculus Rift and Razer Hydra controller. I'm familiar with the Rift's virtual reality headset, but what is the Razer Hydra and how does it work with your game and stuff? With the Razer Hydra, which is a motion control system from Razer, and with that we can have two hands because it's like two kind of, they're almost like nunchucks for the Wii but they use a device in the center that kind of detects where they are. So we have that, slap on the Oculus Rift, use that and you've got kind of like two hands and you can just look around the surgery rooms and see where everything is. Okay then, so how does the Razer work for controlling individual fingers? On the face of it, so if you imagine like a Wii nunchuck, you've got the control sticks and you've got the triggers on the front of it and the top trigger is your index finger, and then the bottom trigger is just the rest of your fingers. Like, we didn't add enough like, buttons for every finger, so we kind of just did the best we could, and then the face buttons are your thumbs, and then you use the control sticks to kind of position yourself. Um, and then you can, uh, the rest of it's just based on the orientation of your hands and how low they are compared to this the sphere. And what's been people's reactions to using this setup? Some people get it mm -hmm. and they're quite natural at it and they can suddenly, you know, they're there with a hammer and they're getting some good hits in, taking that ribcage. Other people are just completely disorientated and they're like looking at their shoulder while kind of, you know, just slapping themselves in the face. But it kind of varies. You've obviously had the chance to try out both control schemes. Which do you think is easiest to use? It's hard. Like, you you can get much more precise movements with the Hydra, but it can get disorientating. Um, so I don't know, I guess... I have to see, it hasn't been out long enough. I think, uh, 
once we made some tweaks to how it controls and stuff, I think you'll start seeing some people who are get very good. Because the thing is with the, the Hydra, you can dual wield tools. Mm. So you'll have someone who's holding a drill with a hammer and they'll just be like <laughs> drilling the guy while hammering at the same time and then just grab both lungs and throw them out. So in theory, you could get a lot faster times, but there's some people who do like 20 odd second that's true. Surgeries. I've, I've seen the, uh, the, the 20 second. Yeah, brain. yeah. So there's now like a bunch of people uh, attempting the speed run the Team Fortress thing. And I know the, we have the medic gun that's a pain in the ass to control. You use like a little joystick to attempt to move it, and uh, it spins all over the place. And people, we've had a lot of people rage from using that. Would you say that a large part of the success of the Surgeon Simulator games was down to Let's Plays on YouTube? Pretty much every YouTuber like who does like the kind of let's plays have gone onto it it's kind of like a you know i say it about my own game but like jump on the bandwagon game sort of thing um and i think yeah i mean that's the reason it got to where it was Wonderful. or where it is now just because we had so much support from so many people watching it and then they would share those videos with people who don't usually play games or aren't interested in that type of thing but it kind of crossed those kind of it wasn't just a gaming it wasn't something gamers found funny it was like everyone could find it funny so it got shared more than a, a funny game video necessarily would, because it didn't need that much context. Finally, Luke, with all the recent talk of the next-gen consoles, what would be the possibility of seeing Surgeon Simulator 2013 appear on the PS4 or the Xbox One? Obviously, PS4, Sony are being really receptive, Microsoft not so much. Um, um, but if, like, you know, perhaps like the Move or something could work, we're using the Hydra at the moment, so well, it could be something uh, with Sony there, but we haven't, we haven't. Definitely sounds like they might be a little more receptive than they used to be. Indeed they do. Indeed they do. There's more exclusive Resd interviews on the horizon, including ones for the Chaos Engine and Sir You Are Being Hunted. So feel free to give us a subscribe and get notifications for them in your subs feed by clicking on that on-screen annotation right now. Remember, a subscription a day keeps the doctor away, so technically I'm saving your life. Technically, if... That statement was true, of course. Oh look, I, I didn't kill him for once. Can you feel the schadenfreude? Lovely stuff.